One of the biggest foreshadowings, Aina College's class transfer. Let's discuss the which class he's moving to and the process behind it. Aina Kochi, who received the words, do your best to be a memorable student from Horikita Manabu, says, let students who go up compete with each other and aim for higher heights. Imagine being in that position. It makes me excited. It even seems somewhat enjoyable. From this dialogue, it is clear that he wants to enjoy making students compete with each other. Firstly, let's reiterate the philosophy behind Aina Koji's class transfer. Aina Koji, upon entering an advanced new junior high school, received a sensibility from Horikita Manabu. Through the growth of Manabu's sister, Horikita Suzune, Aina Koji began to develop an interest in nurturing students and having them grow, as well as in having these students compete with each other. What's intriguing is that Aina Koji, perhaps unconsciously, is like his father, passionately pursuing the theme of human growth. It's interesting that the Horikita siblings, each in their own way, have influenced Aina Koji. And in the aspect of making these nurtured individuals compete, it can be said that the current state of Horikita's class is following the ideal growth envisioned by Aina Koji. The most significant reason is likely that Horikita has grown to the point where it can be said that things will be fine even if Aina Koji weren't in their class. However, Aina Koji's analysis on Horikita is almost complete, reaching a certain limit. Although, Aina Koji mentioned that there might be unexpected changes beyond his expectations if it's within the school environment. At the beginning, Horikita was being manipulated by people like Nguyen. But now, she seems to be able to enter into contracts on equal terms, and there's a sense of having witnessed her growth. So, with these developments, it seems that the current state of Horikita's class may not be an ideal environment for Aina Koji, therefore further supporting the idea of Aina Koji's class transfer. What should be noted here is that Aina Koji is currently placing importance on balancing power. This point is also suggested in the latest volume, and is essential for Aina Koji's educational theory. In a state where he doesn't foster growth, if, for example, Aina Koji were to transfer to class A, which is already overwhelmingly strong, they would become invincible. This would result in one-sided domination and wouldn't fulfill the goal of having those nurtured individuals compete with each other. In other words, the strongest Aina Koji is constrained to move to the weakest class at the present moment. If you're liking the video so far, please like, subscribe, and trying to get me to hit 2k would greatly appreciate it. It would be unnatural for Aina Koji to take initiative. If Aina Koji were to act just as he discovered Karizawa during the cruise ship special exam, he would find a gem within Ichinose's class, and then he would nurture that gem as if it were a cherished treasure. The concept of making students compete implies that Aina Koji is in a position to wield the teaching staff. In other words, students who are going compete with each other, but Aina Koji is not there. He's merely present on the sidelines. In essence, he's only a support to ensure that the class can reach its ultimate potential, being a backing only, and that's so that it can continue even if it's absent. In conclusion, Aina Koji is pouring his heart and soul into creating a class that is sustainable without his presence. So, based on this, let's disciple the misunderstandings about Aina Koji's class transfer. The opinion on the table that even if Aina Koji moves classes, it just as class won't fundamentally change, seems to overlook a crucial point. The common interpretation is that Aina Koji will become the flag bearer, or in other words, the leader of each of his class. However, it's definitely a mistake to say that Aina Koji will become the leader. In conclusion, he possesses the ability to nurture the individualities of each of his class that have been crushed by confirmity pressure. To put it plainly, interpreting it as Aina Koji searching for valuable gems in each of his class, making it permanently independent, seems to be the most powerful interpretation in maintaining his consistent philosophy of wanting to guide and experience defeat himself. His desire to maintain consistency stems from the commitment to living as a guide, and if he were to become a leader, there would be no consistency in his vision. So in essence, Aina Koji wants to educate, or rather guide, and therefore, instead of becoming a leader, it's only when he's a guide from the shadows that consistency can be maintained and a coherent philosophy is born. The myth that Aina Koji would become the leader likely originated during the spring break when Nguyen mentioned that Ichinose and Kanzaki are both strategist types. This unconscious belief that a leader is necessary to transform the class seems to have been formed probably due to this fixed idea. So basically, Aina Koji plans to continue living as a guide in Ichinose's class, supporting them from the shadows. However, if the class were to crumble to the point where they can't come back, at that time, the interpretation that Aina Koji would assist Ichinose and declare the position of a leader is currently a strong possibility. Therefore, arguing about what to do if Ichinose class falls so much that he can't recover is meaningless.
If Nagamo poses a hindrance to Ainokoji's plan in this series of events, for example, if he tries to manipulate Ichinose, Ainokoji will mercilessly crush it. This is because Ainokoji is someone who ensures that a plan is executed at 100% accuracy, and if there's even a 1% chance of failure, he discards the plan. However, if he can eliminate that 1% chance himself, Ainokoji won't be limited by any means. The idea that Ainokoji will move to defeat Nagamo can be created if we consider the theory of Ichinose's class being manipulated by him. This perspective is quite interesting in supporting the theory of Ichinose's class being manipulated by Nagumo. And the basis of this theory includes Nagumo's revenge, preventing a forcible development, and hindrance to Ainokoji's plan. These two ideas can support the theory of Ichinose's class being manipulated. But what do you think of this theory? Well, even if the development diverges like this, I believe that the central theme of moving to the weakless class that having those nurtured individuals compete with each other remains unchanged. I'm looking forward to seeing how Anakoji will act in the future.